Good day, whoever's watching. Today I'm making a video on what's in my pencil case. And so I'm gonna open it. Et voila. That took a long time. <laughs> so I'm gonna take apart everything first. So we can fast forward that. And I know it's a lot. Yeah, it looks like my pencil case is crammed in, and it actually is. But usually, this pencil case does not leave my home. Well, considering it's the pandemic and it's a quarantine, I really have no choice. But when I go out, I often just take from there. It's like when I get to decide which medium I wanted to use for a while. And that's the reason why in this pencil case... There are a lot of materials, a lot of things that I can use. And all of them have become my favorite. You know that advice artists say to beginner that you should explore mediums so that you'll know what you like. And I've been doing that since I started. And these are the things that I really got into. And just from the first glance, you can already see there are a diverse amount of mediums in this well not really diverse i'm not that good at coloring um i'm not really comfortable yet with coloring and painting but i'm trying to familiarize myself and then you see some other knickknacks that aren't necessarily related to drawing just like those covers for the pencils some money and some cards random cards that i just strewn about in that pencil case and so we're done let's proceed to the actual viewing of the materials and the first one is a highlighter pen i'm gonna show you how it works later it's really useful for as i've said making highlights and this one is a divider not necessarily a compass but you can call it a compass divider I use it to ensure that my proportions are correct. Later on, you'll also see how I use that, especially for human anatomy. It's quite sharp too. <laughs> uh, oh, it's also useful for architectural drawings and stuff like that. This is a blending stump, a quite used blending stump. Uh, I just keep it in there instead of using tissue papers. A sharpie marker for really quick drawings. Sometimes I just feel like drawing. Although it's more practical labeling stuff. This is a Posca marker, also white. This I prefer to use. Moving on to that, I'm going to show you how exactly I can use the white marker. Usually when you're trying to make a highlight in drawing, you can just erase away the shadows. To make sure that's the brightest part and you can add more contrast with the shades the shadows although there is another way to deepen that and that's where the white marker comes in it adds a richer contrast a more a, you can feel more the highlights especially when you're trying to draw water or oily skin just like the nose although in this demonstration it's not quite obvious as you'll see perhaps because the graphite and the marker does not mix well or perhaps i put too much graphite or the paper itself is not toned enough to show that highlights whites on toned paper works better you can i mean it's more obvious right brown on white it's more obvious and so that's basically what i'm trying to demonstrate here and then you're gonna see me use a blending stump as i've mentioned earlier it blends stuff obviously uh it makes this out the outlines more subtle it also allows for the shadows to blend more subtly 
allows for a smoother transition and the remaining graphite on the stump itself can be used to also make more shadows, subtler details and can give a very pleasant effect especially if you're striving for realism. And you can see me erasing some of that stuff. Moving on from the white markers, there are also a bunch of lead refills, and for good reason. They're, my, they're for my mechanical pencils. They vary for the sizes, 0.3, 0.5, and stuff like that. And they also vary in the shade grade. There's 2H right there. And then I believe that's a 2B. Yes, that's a 2B. And a B. And there's even a mixed color. That's that's quite interesting. It's like colored pencils, but for mechanical pencils. Look, look. There's some blue, an orange, a violet. It's really interesting. And then there's also an HB, the neutral one. And then 2B for my 0.7 pencil. And then on to my... Fountain pens. I really enjoy fountain pens. Inking is a constant style that I've been drawn to. And this one is just a plain mm, fine nib, I think. That's a fine nib. And fountain pens work similar to ball pens, although they allow for more line variation. See, you can flex some pens. Although, a disclaimer, not all fountain pens are flexible. Flex at your own risk. <laughs> you can break a fountain pen. And this is how the fountain pen looks like. And I have a red ink for this one. That's also the interesting part with fountain pens. You can change the colors. There are more diverse colors. There's chartreuse and even a light blue if you want, blood red, stuff like that. And then this one is Caveco Lilliput. It's quite small, very pocket friendly. Yeah, that's a brand, Caveco. They make a ton of great pocket fountain pens. Uh, this one's made of brass. It's quite sturdy, this one, even though it's small. See? Compared to the palm of my hand. <laughs> it's so cute though. <laughs> Although it's not uncomfortable. The cap of this pen can actually be posted. And that's nib. And see? That's how you post it. It's also twisted into. And it becomes a nice length that you can write comfortably with. This one is a Sailor fountain pen and it's unique in a sense that the nib, unlike usual fountain pens, is bent. It's a bent nib or a Fude nib. Fude nib allows for more line variation without the need of flexing the pen. This is it compared to a normal one. So a Fude nib can give you thin lines and thick lines. See? Thick. I'm talking thick. <laughs> and then a very thin line. And if you're skilled enough, you can transition that into a thick line again. I'm not sure how. I think this is for artists mainly. Although you can also use it for calligraphy. But I believe italic nibs are more used for that. And this is a demonstration of how a wooden nib can be used. So for example, I wanted to create larger shadows in quicker time for example i'm drawing outside uh, the model is gonna walk away like that so i need to be really quick with my stuff let's speed it up a little and you'll see how i also use the line variations for not just creating the shadows but the subtle details man i keep using the word, the word subtle a lot <laughs> in this video I, i'm gonna avoid doing that and see how I use the thicker lines to for a quick work on the hair because it's quite a large mass to draw. And then 
as quickly as that, I'm done with the portrait. And that's actually the convenience I find with inking and the use of fountain pens particularly. They're quite fun to use <laughs> for me, especially in drawing. And then next on that list is another fountain pen. I like this one for its texture. It's an ebonite pen made from India. Quite a large pen, comfortable to use, warm to the touch, and a very attractive design. I just like to hold it around and draw with it. And this one is another Caveco fountain pen, the brass Caveco Sport. And I really love this for its heft and the aesthetic of the brass, the way it patinas. Look at that nib. Oh, yes. <laughs> so attractive. Silver on brass. It also happens to be my favorite design of fountain pen. So I have three of them with very attractive colors. Bordeaux and blue. And they also have optional clips that you can buy. And these are fountain pen cartridges there are two ways to refill a fountain pen one is through a bottle you use a converter or you can use a cartridge similar to the one i use for this caveco sport a cartridge works by just simply inserting it into the fountain pen although i don't recommend to just simply insert it when the old one runs out I try to clean them as much as I can, like once a month. After the fountain pens, I also have pencils. And this one is a lead holder. No, what's... Th these are all lead holders. And I have a bunch of them because they differ also in colors. One is black, brown, and red. And they differ from... A mechanical pencil in the sense that a lead holder has a much thicker lead as compared to a pencil. If I'm correct that one is 5.6 millimeter while the other is just 0 0.5 millimeter. A lead holder allows for just like the Fude nib thicker wider shading and lines although you can also sharpen the tip so that you can add more details and i enjoy the lead holder because of its heft it's quite sturdy you can put it in your bag and you won't worry about it getting broken and i like the heaviness of my writing and drawing materials and see here how i'm using the lead holder to draw a skull without much focus on the details. That's what the lead holder allows me to do also. To draw the bigger picture instead of just the, the details. I tend to get transfixed. Uh, to focus on the details sometimes. That I forget proportions and important stuff like that. And then I use the very tip to add those very tiny amounts of lines precise lines and yeah you can see how quickly you can draw with it it's very useful and figure drawing especially outside or when you're trying to capture the shadows and the lights of your subject And of course, in these lead holders, I have a bunch of them, as I've mentioned. My favorite is this one, the Caveco Sport lead holder. And once again, it's mainly because of the weight and the aesthetic. Look at that. Look at that patina. Oh yes, that looks good. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I just love brass. <laughs> 
as you'll notice. And then this is a Koinor, heavier than the Caveco, but eh. And another Koinor. I like the aesthetic of this one too, the design. And after that, this one is a cross mechanical pencil. I believe this is a point nine. Yeah, quite a thick. You roll it to have the pen eject the lead the lead and uh, it's vintage i quite like the aesthetic the novelty of the experience is what i'm after here and this is a rotring mechanical pencil 0.5 strong expensive <laughs> but i really like it promeka fat boy <laughs> 0.5 mechanical pencil, comfortable to hold. A monograph, 0 0.2 I believe. And compared to Rotring, you can see the lead, it's very small, 0 0.2. The Rotring is 0 0.5. And the main use for that is to allow for more finer details. And I'm gonna demonstrate here how exactly the monograph does that. As you notice, there's a very small space in the notebook, but if I want to draw a detailed drawing, I can use the 0 0.2 lead to draw with that. And here's a compass. I'm gonna demonstrate how exactly I use it for proportions. So yeah, I draw with the ruler and then... I'm gonna draw human anatomy here. And for that, I need uh, accurate proportions to make it look natural. And see how I do that. It's really great for that dividing stuff. I mean, that's why it's called the divider. <laughs> so yeah, but if you're the type of artist that does not really follow the accurate human anatomy, you do you. I just prefer mine. I'm more on the realism side of things. Although I need to work more on that anatomy. I'm not that familiar with the muscular system huh not yet i mean i haven't perfected it although you get the idea moving on from that another lead holder but this one is more it's smaller the previous one was 5.6 millimeter and this one is 2 millimeter 2.0 millimeter and to demonstrate its advantages, I can also use it for general lines, looser lines. And then the point, the sharp point of it can be used to add the details, more defined lines. As you can see how I do this side profile. So it's basically like a normal pencil, but heavier. <laughs> This one is made of brass, I believe. The commoner one. And yeah. It also helps, the lead holders help keep the fingers neat and cleaner. For me, I find it cleaner to use. And you can hide the lead when you're not using it. So in your bag, if you don't want to mess things up. You can use the lead holder. The normal pencil does not really have the option of being covered. Unless you purposefully get a cap for it. And this me, I can also add subtle shades using the side of the lead. Moving on from the lead holder, this one is a Rotring 800. And I like this because of its retractable tip. You see, when you drop a mechanical pencil, if the tip is exposed, it tends to fall, to bend, and that protects it from that. This is another Caveco mechanical pencil, 0.5, thick and chunky, and also made of brass. You can already see the pattern. And then some other things in my pencil case. 
uh, you can see the bill, the money, and some tiny drawings that I'm working on. This is a Christmas gift that I haven't really finished because I can't meet my friends because of the pandemic. I'm trying to find a way to send it to each other. So yeah, recreations of paintings, iconic paintings. I'm trying to work on the scream next, but I'm trying to find the motivation. A random card. This one's a clip holder. Uh pencil holder i believe you attach it to your sketchbook or your notebook like that then you can put in your chosen pencil although there are specific diameter of drawing material you can put into it perhaps the size of a big pen the diameter of a big pen preferably so i can't really jam in there my cavecos uh, some tweezers. You never know when you need one. <laughs> uh, an instruction manual for Mikalco pencil. An eraser. Uh, quite thick. Uh, a stylus. You never know when you need to go digital. Some coins. Random coins. I mostly use them for when I need an emergency weights. Or an emergency circle to use. Precise circles to use. They are different in sizes. And I just like the look of them. And as you've seen earlier, I also have some rulers, triangles. 45 degrees and the 90 degrees triangle. And a ruler. A very small one. Bendy. I like the colors too. And this one is interesting. It's an eraser shield. I'm not exactly sure what you call it, but I like to call it an eraser shield. And what is that? This is a thin piece of metal. And you can use it to erase precise spots. So, uh, for example, I'm gonna draw here um, some intersecting lines. Yeah, that looks good. That looks good. And I want to erase a specific part. I can use that shield to cover up the other parts of the drawing. I want to erase that, for example. Only that part. And I don't want to do it over and over again. I can put that over there. Get my eraser. And just erase without worry. And if I want to push it more. I think I left some. I can erase it then, there you go it's not the neatest erasing job i can do i should have gone lighter but that's how it works really useful for precise erasing and so that is all of my stuff in my pencil case as i've mentioned it's quite a lot and if you found out in this video that you liked fountain pens, you like the idea of it, well, go ahead and try. There is a misconception that these things are quite expensive. And I do admit they tend to get expensive. But you can buy cheaper stuff before heading into the more expensive ones. I started with cheap mechanical pencils and cheap fountain pens. And I when I liked them, I proceeded to buy the more expensive ones. Basically, dip your toes first before committing on buying expensive art materials. An artist can create great art even with cheap ones. So thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed my video.